Police, employed by the state, are inherently dangerous, not because all police officers are horrible people, instead because the institution which hires them is systemically psychopathic. While the individuals who become police officers may truly believe they are ensuring the safety and well-being of their community, this belief is based upon falsehoods ingrained in them by their parents, culture, and public school indoctrination. Children are taught that police exist to protect and serve. This noble idea inspires a sense of awe in the young and encourages them to aspire to such lofty endeavors, dreaming of someday becoming an officer themselves. The truth is something quite different. Law enforcement serves the state, mainly as a source of revenue generation through traffic and code violations. The notion that police are a form of protection for the community has been discarded more than once by the Supreme Court, ruling that the police have no constitutional duty to protect a person from harm. The psychopathy of the police derives from the fact that law enforcement officers are an arm of the state. The state itself is fundamentally psychopathic because it relies upon the initiation of violence to accomplish its duties. An example is a minor traffic violation, such as a speeding ticket. There are no victims involved in a speeding citation. The only infraction committed is exceeding an arbitrary number posted on a road sign. This is extortion. If you fail to show up at court for your traffic ticket, a warrant will be issued for your arrest. Consequently, men with guns will arrive at your door and kidnap you for a misdeed that had no victim. This is the initiation of violence that the police and state rely upon for their illegitimate authority. Training children to believe a distorted reality, who then grow up and raise their own children with a deceptive actuality of the role of police, is an abuse to society. Giving people a false sense of security in an institution that claims it is there to protect them, but then is backed by the Supreme Court, guaranteeing that the police do not have any responsibility at all to protect anyone, is sadistic. Lamentably, trying to explain this to average people is a difficult task. Not because they're stupid, but because their cultural, parental, and school programming takes over. To protect and serve is emotional terminology that induces warm, fuzzy feelings. Those well-versed in human psychology know that when sentiment is attached to an idea, it is more difficult to discard the idea even if the concept has been proven something other than what originally told. This is what makes the police establishment dangerous. The innocent that put their faith in a psychopathic system, believing it will protect them, all while the institution is told it has no obligation to protect anyone. I was a witness to a homicide. On the 22nd of September, 2008, the very SWAT team that I founded in the 1970s killed my son-in-law in my presence. I went over it and over it in my head because it didn't make sense the way it went down. There were officers everywhere. I kept telling them, let me talk to Brian. I know I can calm this situation down. They said, absolutely not. They were in control and they were gonna handle the situation. The police are creating these circumstances. They're creating the volatility. They're creating the violence. They're creating the very thin margin for error. The premise that the cops are becoming more like the military, it is false. It's really me as a sheriff preparing a deputy with all the tools that I can give him to go into a situation where there's a high probability somebody will get shot. Police officers are receiving military weapons and equipment. And when you dress them up and you give them that mindset, it's not a surprise that they start acting in a militaristic way. When the police make a mistake and shoot someone who isn't really a threat, they're always forgiven because it's the volatility of the situation. People on the receiving end of these raids aren't given that consideration. Whiskey 7, we're at 3268. Jackson, we got shot fired. We got officer hit. I need medical. I need additional units. I don't believe that for one minute Matthew knew that it was the police that was breaking into his home. There's no doubt in my mind that he knew exactly what he was doing and who he was firing at. These guys need to go home at night with their families just like the rest of us do. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Two people dead over what? What were they protecting us from? 
as I began to piece together the puzzle, it became an obsession into trying to find the truth. Why? Why did this happen? Who's making these decisions? The objective of our entire profession is to bring peace. Sometimes peace is purchased with violence. 